Hi, and welcome to Chapel This Week, where we pause and go deeper to find meaning together. And a special welcome to Year 11 and 12 who are back on campus. Recently, I watched the new Aladdin movie, not the old one, the new one with Will Smith as the genie, and I really enjoyed it. I thought he did a great job, but I gotta say, I don't think it has anything on the 90s Disney classic, which was the cartoon. And this is one of my favorites, and I'm sure it's one of yours as well. And one of the things that I noticed in that movie about Aladdin, who we, he's the hero, he ends up winning in the end against his arch nemesis Jafar, and they had this big climax at the end, and I thought, why did he end up winning? And it was probably this reason. Aladdin paid attention to details about the lamp. Whereas Jafar, for, his, for all his cleverness and all his intelligence and all his sorcery, he missed a few details about the lamp. And in the end, it was his undoing. And you see this in so many movies, like our favourite movies and books and narratives, Lord of the Rings and Indiana Jones and Harry Potter, where the villain... As clever as they are, they miss something. They don't pay attention to a detail. They don't reflect. And they end up coming undone. We're in the middle of a crisis, or it's about to be over. It's this kind of funny time. But there was a saying that I heard the other day about, don't waste a crisis. What do we need to pay attention to? What do we need to reflect on? so that the lessons that we're learning from this crisis actually make a difference. What do we need to pay attention to so we don't come undone? There's this famous quote from a Danish philosopher, Soren Kierkegaard, and he says this, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. We have to practice the art of reflection. But as I was thinking through this, I thought, well, what do I do to reflect? And I came across another quote by a very famous man, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and he says this, a wise man has questions which are as vivid as that which he holds to be true. Now that's a complex way of saying, at the heart of wisdom is one who asks good questions of themselves, of the world, and this quote actually uh, got mentioned to me by another person who was quoting another person in the US media, and she's a journalist, and she was told by her boss that she had to go and interview the president, Donald Trump, and she refused. And the reason she refused, and I'm not trying to get political, political here, but the reason she refused is because she says, Donald Trump has no more questions. He's already arrived, he thinks, and she had no interest in interviewing him. At Northern Beaches Christian School, we want to be people who reflect. We want to pay attention to things so that we don't come undone. So today and tomorrow in your mental reflection group, we're going to ask ourselves some questions. We're going to try and be wise. So I've come up with a couple, and let's just go through them quickly, and there'll be plenty more tomorrow, but let's just run through a couple. So one of the biggest questions I've been thinking about is, what have we missed what are the things that we've missed in this crisis? And I know that I've missed uh, having a routine. That's definitely been one thing. Uh, I think a bigger thing I've missed is face-to-face -face connection, as good as Zoom and conferencing is. I miss the face-to-face. -face. And the beautiful thing, beautiful thing about face-to-face -face connection is the incidental interaction you have with people, especially people who are different to me. And I've missed that. Uh, another question or questions that you should ask, uh, what really matters to you? Um, <laughs> what really doesn't matter to you. Another question we might have and we need to ask is, uh, what's it taught us about relationships? What's it taught us about money and material possessions? Uh, what has it taught you about your health and your body? Uh, another question that I like to think about all the time is, what are we gonna be more thankful for? And gratefulness is one of our values here at Northern Beaches Christian School. Here's another one. Uh, what lesson are you likely to forget in three months' time when things go back to normal? I don't know straight away the thing for me that pops out is I miss routine, but I know I'm going to start complaining about routine again. And I kind of want to remember how precious routine is and the way it affects even the way I eat and, and my exercise patterns. Uh, another question we might want to ask is what needs, needlessly filled your life previously that doesn't need to return? And I know personally there are plenty of things in my calendar that dropped out, but you know what, I don't need to put some of those things back in. Uh, another question, what poor habit could you fall back into? And finally, how will you see the world differently? 
and more so, what will you do differently? Uh, these are some questions that you can ask yourself. I hope that you do. And like I said, you'll have the chance tomorrow. But to conclude, I wanted to think about this theme of questions as well, because it's not just about questioning self. It's also about questioning God. Some of us have big questions for God in this time. And there's this famous little quote from Jesus when the disciples are bringing children to him, and he says this back to them. He said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Now, I've always read this, and I still think it's true, that we need to come to God like a little child, uh, because children just trust their parents. They have a beautiful dependence. But there's another thing that children do with their parents. They question them all the time. In fact, little children ask their parents a lot of questions. Mom, Dad, why are we doing this? Why does the world work that way? Why do I have to do this? What's next? And Jesus says, come to me like a little child. Ask me all your questions. I can take it. And in the middle of the Bible, you get this huge book, the book of Psalms. And it's 150 chapters. And this is basically a book about people asking questions of God, and really hard ones, sometimes shaking their fists at him. And God says, bring it. Ask me your questions. Asking questions is wise. It's what it means to be human. Come to me with your doubts. I can take your questions. And I love that we can bring God our questions, and I'm sure you've got some for him. And to finish with, I just thought we'd finish with Psalm 1. And Psalm 1 paints this beautiful picture. And it says, Blessed is the person who meditates on the word of God day and night. They're always thinking. They're always dwelling. And if they can do that, they are like a tree, like in this image, planted by streams of water, nourished, fed, no matter what the season, no matter how dry, no matter how tumultuous, that tree is able to survive and thrive and stay green because its roots go deep into a source which is God. I know for me, the thing I've been meditating on during this season of uncertainty is how precious certainty is. And my meditations have found me coming to God, who is a certain God. There are so many things I can be certain of with him. I know he's loving, kind, compassionate. I know he's not just a God who I call master or king. He's a God I call father, and I can come to him like a little child. I love that he's wise, that he knows what he's doing. He knows what is good. And we have a hope and a destiny with him if we want to. And that is super secure and safe and certain. And they're some of the things um, I've appreciated meditating on. And perhaps that's something for you. So I hope you found this helpful. Let's be people who reflect. Let's be people who pay attention so we don't come undone. And tomorrow with your mentor, how about you ask yourself some of the questions we spoke about today, and I'm sure you'll come up with your own.